How to create a drop-down list in Excel. I will help you build drop-down lists all the way from the ground up. You can open your own Excel workbook and follow along step by step if you like. Here's our starting point. We have some data in columns I, J and K that we're going to use to build a basic drop-down list and a more advanced drop-down list dependent on another cell. And on top of that we will build a yes or no drop-down list. The teams that we are looking at are going through a contest. We want to create an Excel spreadsheet that makes it easier to keep track of the progress. We start with a row at the top, listing the round in column A, the team in column B, the team member in column C, the completion status in column D, and points gained in column E. In the next row, we are going to work with various types of drop-down lists. The great thing about drop-down lists in Excel is that they make data entry easier for people. And you can control the data other people enter by restricting the options they can choose from. Let's make a basic drop-down list first in cell B2. We go to the Data tab, press Data Validation right here, and then Data Validation. Pick from a list of rules to limit the type of data that can be entered in a cell. Yep, that's what we want. In Settings, we go to Allow, and select list. As you can see from the options here, there are many types of data validation that you can do. Building drop-down boxes is just one of them. We now click in the source field and then select cells I1 through K1. While we are in this data validation dialog box, we might as well add some user friendliness by going to input message. Typing select team in the title field and please select the participating team in the input message field. We will see shortly how this comes across to the user in the workbook. Then in error alert, we have several options. We can stop the user from continuing if an input error occurs. We can provide a warning or simply just show some information. Let's go to the toughest option of stopping the user from entering anything but the approved choices on the list. In the title field, we type invalid team selected. And in the error message field, only select from the list of participating teams. Once we have verified what we typed, click OK. Let's take a look what our drop-down list looks like. Once we activate cell B2, we notice the drop-down list input message that we typed earlier. Please select the participating team. When we click on the list, we can select team 1, 2 or 3. That all works fine. Let's now see if our error alert works. Some users might be typing in data rather than selecting an option from the drop-down list. Let's type in team 4 and hit enter. This gives the user the stop error message. Invalid team selected, only select from the list of participating teams. There is no way for the user to ignore this message. The choices are to either retry and type a valid option or to cancel which brings the user back to the previous selection. In cell C2, we're going to build a dependent drop-down list. Let's say that we selected team 1 in cell B2. In cell C2, we want to display only the names of the team 1 members. In other words, our drop-down list selection in C2 needs to be dependent on what was selected in another cell, more specifically the drop-down list in B2. In order to achieve this, we need to tell Excel where the data for each team resides. Let's select the names of the Team 1 members, then go to the Formulas tab and click Define Name right here in the middle. We will assign the name Team 1 to the members of that team. We now select the name of the Team 2 members. Go to Formulas, Define Name again and assign the name Team 2 to the members of that team. Same action for Team 3. Select the names, go to Formulas, Define Name, assign Team 3 to the members of that team. Now over here on the left, we can verify that we have correctly assigned the names. Team 1, Team 2, Team 3. Now we go back to cell C2, go to the Data tab, Data Validation, and start making our drop-down list. In the Source field, we type a formula. 
equals indirect open parenthesis dollar sign b dollar sign two close parenthesis then on input message select team member in the title field and please select specific team member in the input message field in error alert we once again go for the stop message in the title invalid team member selected and in the error message field only select from the list of team members once we have verified what we typed click ok here we go we have created a dependent drop down list in excel if team 1 is selected in cell b2 then the team 1 members are available for selection in cell c2 if team 2 is selected in cell b2 then the team 2 members are available for selection in cell c2 if team 3 is selected in cell b2 then the team 3 members are available for selection in cell c2 what if a new team member joined team 1 I can type the name at the bottom of the list of team 1 members in column I but that does, does not make it immediately available in the drop down list remember that we assigned names earlier we can update the range where the names are stored go to the formulas tab name manager select the team you want to edit and simply extend the range as you see all four names are now showing in the drop down list if you want the choices in the drop down list to be stated in alphabetical order then select the four cells i2 through i5 right mouse click sort sort from a to z continue with the current selection sort the choices in the drop down list have now been updated accordingly we could also give the users the option to leave cell c2 blank by adding an empty cell formulas tab name manager extend the range by one cell which happens to be blank now there is a blank option at the bottom of the drop down list so far we have been linking the drop down list to cell ranges let's add another drop down list where we do the opposite we are going to input the items to choose from straight into the data validation area for the completion column we want a drop down list with only the options yes and no in cell d2 we go to data data validation select list and simply type in the source field yes and no separated by a semicolon some tutorials will tell you to type yes and no separated by a comma and a space but it does not work on my machine as input message we type task completed and was the team successful in this round the user can now simply select either yes or no in cell e2 we can assign points to that yes or no outcome of cell d2 if cell d2 is yes then show 5 if not show 0 now if we change the selection in cell d2 the number of points in e2 changes we can now create new rows and copy over the drop down boxes let's select a different team here cell b3 and d3 work without a problem but for c3 the dependent drop down list we need to make sure we update the indirect formula that is part of the data validation it currently refers to cell b2 we need that to be b3 and at the bottom of the points column we can choose to sum the points or make any other overview of the scores currently we have the data about the teams in plain view in the same sheet of the workbook here in columns i through k if we don't want users to see the data we could select the data cut it using ctrl x paste it into a new sheet with ctrl v and hide that sheet by right clicking on it and selecting hide this doesn't change the drop down list functionality in excel i can still select teams and team members as before what makes it less transparent to the user where the source data is placed drop down lists a very useful piece of functionality in excel